Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. <laughs> How is everybody doing today? <clears throat> so, hello everybody. I see all the usual suspects are in the chat today. Always good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss this class a little bit once it's over. Um, hmm. um, it provides something of a degree of structure to my life, which is always useful. But uh, anyway. Well, um, <laughs> oof, um, ah, uh, yeah, your team got slapped three to zero. Given the points uh, at odds there, I'm, I'm guessing that isn't basketball. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's hockey? Is it a hockey team that we're talking about? Maybe lacrosse? Yeah, I suppose it could be soccer as well. Maybe it's golf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's when you're when you're stuck in your house uh reasonably consistently, um you know it kinda gets a little Ah, soccer, there we go. Well, my condolences. Um, it gets kind of difficult to, uh, you know, maintain that those semblances of civilization which you've come to rely upon to give your life structure! Yes. Anyway, um, so the ostensible purpose of this, uh, this meeting of the minds this Wednesday evening is, uh, <laughs> ringette? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I don't I don't actually play ringette. <clears throat> I don't actually uh, play any sports, really. Um, I just know a few of the names of them. Um, I don't know. I do gardening. That's about as physical activity-ish as I get. But anyway, um, the ostensible purpose here is for you guys to um, present me with questions that you may have about the course material as it's been covered so far, and I will divulge perhaps a few uh, secret little hints about the exam. That's usually why people are tuned in, but uh, <laughs> the best sports is eSports. I agree! Yes! Um, especially Especially competitive Splatoon. That's the best one. Um, yes. Gardening is... I, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's... Um, it's nice to be able to grow something and then be able to eat it. Uh, competitive gardening. I mean, uh, that's... Competitive gardening, uh, you could consider, like, the rise of civilizations during the agricultural revolution way back in the Stone Age to be uh, a form of competitive gardening, I suppose. Um. <laughs> Anywho, um, our, our purpose here is to do some exam review. So we should get to it. Um. <laughs> um, well, it's very flattering, thank you. 
So, with respect to the exam, I, I suppose it would be useful to review the format and the organizational details, etc., etc., etc. Yes, the kittens, I'm sure, will make an appearance today at some point. Um, so, the exam. The exam will be held this Saturday uh, in the usual form. You'll have from 9 a.m. on Saturday until 9 a.m. on Sunday to complete it. So you've got that 24-hour window, similar to both of the tests. Um, with respect to the length and difficulty of the exam, it turns out, as it's written, that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it turns out that it's actually not, it's, I'd say it's roughly in league with test two in terms of difficulty. Um, it certainly should be around that length. So if that was a good length for you, then you should have no problem with the exam. Um, yes. Cool. So before I get a bunch of people in the chat, uh, I lost a lot of people to the dark side. That's true. The dark side of uh, not being able to actually ask questions at the time, but, uh, you know, coming in and watching it afterwards. So, uh, I should review for you guys the subjects, the, um, the topics that are likely to show up. I will, of course, uh, deal in probabilities for all of these things because only a Sith deals in absolutes. So here we go. Uh, the exam will definitely, definitely focus on the material that has been covered since the um, second midterm. So that includes the material that we covered on classes. That includes the material that we covered on visualization and timing or time constructs the time date time object um, that includes the um, the stuff on file io uh, that also includes the stuff on um, machine learning however i uh, i don't nor like I'm not going to expect you guys to accurately reconstruct a uh, uh, I, I like I suppose doing a linear regression would be within the realm of possibility, but um, the uh, I'm not like generally speaking uh, that's not usually something I I, I I sort of view it as being. Um, not necessarily core curriculum to this particular course. I'm much, much more interested in seeing if you guys understand uh, uh, classes, for example. Classes are really important. So you can, with, I think I will say, 95% uh, probability, expect that there's a classes question on the test or on the exam in some form or another. Um, if you guys were paying attention to the um, the one tutorial that was given, am I saying that one of the exam questions involves linear regression? Uh, nope, I am not. I'm uh, I am not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying that that's the type of thing that would be reasonable to ask. Uh, given the material, like if I were to look through the um, the um, machine learning stuff, one thing that I would be able to pick out of that, uh, which would be reasonably reasonable for a, for a test question, would be some sort of linear regression question. Uh, question: Will be will there be stuff that was not covered in our assignments, uh, making graphs, SQL stuff? Um, probability of that would be reasonably high. Generally speaking, um, ah, a 
classes question. Aren't all questions about this class? Um, uh, no. Uh, yes. Um, so, uh, generally speaking, I, I don't think that it is a huge, uh, I don't think it's a unreasonable thing to ask for you guys to be able to do some SQL stuff on the exam, given that most of the SQL stuff that you would need to, like most of the commands that you would need, are in fact right there in the, um, the lecture notes, like in black and white, uh, clear as crystal. So, um... I, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask some SQL questions. Same thing with the visualization stuff. Uh, if you are asked to produce any visualization stuff, the, um, uh, the commands that you would need, it's mostly a matter of looking through the, uh, the lecture notes and finding the commands that you're looking for and just going from there, um, which I think is quite reasonable given the open book nature of the exam. So, um, yes, uh, the question, the uh, tutorial that I was talking about was, in fact, the Socket Monsters tutorial. Um, that uh, is actually a exam question that I have used in a previous version of this, uh, a previous offering of this very class. Uh, I tend to like questions like that. Um, generally speaking. <laughs> this is kind of terrible, but uh, I, I have a tendency to kind of just take whatever video game I'm playing at the time, uh, normally uh, like whatever phone game I'm playing, and extract out of that uh, like a super abstract, super simplified version and ask that as an exam question. Uh, so I guess the... Um, <laughs> The thing that you can now do is see if you can anticipate what uh, what game I've been playing on my phone these days. Anyway, how many questions? Not going to tell you. Ha 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 ha! You can expect it to be a similar length to test two, though. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's... I think... Is there anything else to say about the exam? Hmm. I don't know. I was a little bit... Um... <laughs> so what go ga phone game am I playing now? I'm not telling you. You'll just have to wait till Saturday to find out. <laughs> uh, no, it's not Roblox. Um... I don't know, maybe you can guess it. There's no way it's not something to do with Mario. Um, it's not something to do with Mario. It's not uh, PUBG. It's not COD. Um, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, uh... <laughs> no, it's not. No, but if they want to sponsor this video, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm poor. I like money. Uh... <laughs> um, would you even tell us if, if you got it right? Um, yes, I... I, 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 uh... I wouldn't say yes but you could probably tell from my face if you guessed the correct one. But anyway. This, so anyway, uh, it, no, it's not Flappy Bird. Generally speaking, I try to avoid... Um, I have learned that avoiding uh, uh, geometry is a good thing for the class questions that I, uh, I tend to ask. Um, nope, 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 it's not Lord's Mobile, and it's not Slay the Spire. Nope. You'll be very disappointed with me when you find it out, find out what it is. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so, um, 
So if anybody has, at this point in time, an actual question that they'd like to uh, that they'd like to ask, um, then uh, that would be awesome. Ooh, on the subject of Civ Six for mobile, it's kind of hilarious. Um, this was a this was a while back, so it's not n not like my uh... <laughs> it's it's not my it's it's not the it's not the game. Uh, but I found on the uh, like on the on the Google Play Store they had a game called Unciv, which is basically a bare bones uh, like exact copy of Civ Five, which is kind of hilarious that they let them get away with that. But you know, uh, it's not Geometry Geometry Dash, it's not Candy Tra Crush, it's not uh, Nukes for Everyone, it's not Minesweeper, although that's a that's a that's a decent guess. Um, can we go over how to resolve aliasing issues in code? Well, that's a good one. Any recursion slash memoization questions that are possible to show up on the exam? Um, so, recursion is definitely a thing that could show up. Uh, that's uh, any topic from the course is something that could show up. That being said, the definitely the meat and bones of the uh, of the exam is going to be stuff that has not been tested yet. So since we tested uh, recursion and memoization on test two, and it was a bit of a bit of a fiasco, if I'm uh, you know by many judge of things, then um, yeah, you can you 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 don't have to worry about memoization. I'm just going to say it. You don't have to worry about memoization. Recursion might come up again, but memoization, nah. Um, this man really be playing Minecraft Pocket Edition. No. <laughs> nope, it's not Minecraft. Um, although Minecraft is reasonably simple. Is recursion on lists going to be on the test? Um, well... If you're going to do a recursion question, there's like two way. There are two main forms that takes. Number one is recursive iteration over a data structure, and number two is some sort of numeric thing like Fibonacci or um, factorial. Uh, but uh, which one of those? Uh, I, I'm not at liberty to say. Uh, it's not Temple Run. It's not Portal. Uh, it's not uh, Star Wars. Uh, it's not the Star Wars mobile pay-to-win game, or that either. Um, it's not Clash Royale. It's not Animal Crossing. <laughs> it's not Clash of Clans. Uh, yes, and you'll be disappointed when you find out. You absolutely will. Um, <clears throat> you know what? It's it's kind of fun because like even if you even if you know which one it is, it doesn't necessarily uh, give you an, much indication of like the manner in which I've simplified it and turned it into a class question. So, but anyway, it's not Hearthstone. It's not, uh, no, it's not Hearthstone. It's not FIFA either. It, oh, Factorio is on mobile. That's fun. Factorio is a great game, but it's not what, uh, it's not what the, the question's about. Not 2048, although that would be a good one. Uh, it's not a clicker game, um, and it's also not Candy Crush Saga. <laughs> Play Gink? No, it's not Play Gink. Uh, not League? Nope. Is there any way the graphs can be checked in a way that if there's a question about visualization? Um, on that one, um, I, you just have to... Uh, what would happen is the test case would have a graph printout, and you'd have to look at the graph printout to see if it's correct. But I had some actual questions here. Can we go over uh, resolving aliasing issues in code? That's a question I can do something with. Uh, it's not mobile chess. Um, it's not team fight tab tactics one. Oh, okay. Satisfactory. Um, I've heard of it. Uh, that's. Uh, I haven't tried it out though. 
Mindustry is a really cool game. I used to be really obsessed with it, but no. Um, Club Penguin, nope. It's not 2048 either. It's all not draw something. Uh, can we put a, go over why we need to put self as a variable in functions within classes? I'm confused when we do. The, yes, okay. Um, so I'm going to, I think, keep a little uh, notepad of the questions that are real questions. So, choop choop, choop choop, choop choop. I think I already asked uh, answered the uh, um, question about recursion. Um, <laughs> Yes. Good. That's a question that's related to a thing that I said was probably going to show up, so that's probably a good question. Uh, Terraria. No, I've actually, I couldn't really get into Terraria, to be honest with you, for whatever reason. Um, <clears throat> so, aliasing. I'm going to talk about aliasing in, for a little bit, and you guys can, uh, I may I may not keep up with the, all of the games that people are talking about in the chat. So, aliasing. Let's go over the concept. So, aliasing has... Uh, the, the basic premise of aliasing is this is Pyth how Python handles the concept of assignment when you apply it to things that aren't necessarily, like, one specific concrete value. <laughs> Excuse me. This is, um, generally speaking, when we're talking about a aliasing, this means data structures. So this applies to um, things like lists and dictionaries, which are mutable data structures, but not to things which are immutable, things like tuples. So if we have a list, L is equal to... One, two, three. Sure. Print L. There we go. Ta-da! If we assign M is equal to L, and then we assign M, uh, M at 1 is equal to 5, you'll notice that although we're printing L, the modification that was made to M is made to L. That's because both L and M are pointing to the same memory. This is what we call, um, in other languages, in something like C, we would consider M and L to be pointers, pointers to the same uh, space in memory. So this is kind of an important thing. Um, Most of the time when I have an issue with aliasing, I use the copy function or splice with, uh, yeah. So that's, okay, that's, uh, I'll explain why those work, right? Um, and it's not puzzle and dungeons, uh, sorry, puzzle and dragons. No, it's not that. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, that's, that's what aliasing means. M is an alias of L. So, this is a thing that can kind of trip you up if you are, um, dealing with things inside of functions. So, if we have, um, some function f, and it takes some list x, capital X, as an argument, and let's say for uh, x in x, x equals x plus 2, something like that. Or for i in range uh, length of x, that's probably better. There we go. You know, some some function. When Python accepts things as arguments to functions, it uses what is called pass 
by assignment. So this capital X, whatever you supply as the argument um, down here, say F at M, The thing that happens is that x becomes an alias of whatever it is you've provided as an argument. Since it's an alias, any modifications which are made to this underlying data structure, uh, I need to capitalize those, there we go, any, any modifications which are made to this guy show up here, and since m is also an alias of l, you can see that 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 modification is followed through. So, um, one second. Is this call by value or call by reference? So, in the case of in in the case of um, dynamic dynamic, what is it called again? Oh my gosh. I'm brain farting on the terminology that I just freaking used. <sighs> Static data structures and dynamic data structures. Freaking mutable. Mutable. There we go. Um, it's not Bloons Tower Defense, although that's a good game. And it's not... Plants vs. Zombies, and it's not Heyday. Uh, I haven't heard of Heyday, actually. Um, so... Um, maybe I'll give you guys a hint. Um, I don't know, though. This is too much fun. If I have five people in the chat ask for a hint, I'll give a hint. Um, so anyway, this is, uh, this is closer to, um, the call by reference rather than a call by value. Um, just because a reference is being created when you invoke the function call. Uh, this is, uh, the, the technical Pythonese way of saying it though is pass by assignment. And that is... That should be a sufficient um, mental uh, way of imagining uh, these underlying semantics. There's implicit assignment going on. So right underneath here, if m is provided as an argument for x, then this statement is implicit in the function call. But anyway, so when you have all of these aliases, there are a couple of ways that you can break out of aliasing, right? Uh, so aliasing is only a thing on mutable data structures, lists, dictionaries. I think sets are mutable as well, um, not tuples or strings. So in tuples and strings, we don't have this problem. We don't have aliasing. So if you use a operation that's a non-mutating operator, then you can break something out of a reference to a another data structure. The easiest way to do this, as one of your uh, one of your colleagues points out, is to simply slice the list from its beginning to its end. The slice operator is a um, mute, it's a non-mutating operator. So if we do this, you can see none of the me me none of the modifications that are made to M apply to L. Therefore, L is preserved in its original uh, format. M, however, is uh, not. So there you go. That breaks th up the reference between L and M. That using this slice operator. There are a number of different ways that you can, uh, there are a number of different things that you can do to cut, to uh, break that reference, but this is, I think, the easiest and the quickest. So hopefully that's a decent description of aliasing, and uh, we can check that off our list.
I'm not saving it. Good lord. Okay. Let's see. Uh, please give hint. Hint, 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 hint. Are stocks going up or down tomorrow? And a hint, please. Um, well, it is a Thursday. And Thursdays are usually... Uh, I don't know. Sure. Stonks are going up. Why not? It's not online Scrabble. Okay. So, a hint. The, jet, the developer of this mobile game is Japanese. And it's not Nintendo. So there you go. There's your hint. Anyway, so that's aliasing. So what's our next question? Uh, can we go over why we need to put self as a variable in functions within classes? Um, when do you and when do you not need to include it? Well, the quick answer to your question is that you always need to include it. <laughs> uh, it's not FGO. I don't know what that is. It's not Arknights. It's not Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem, well, I guess it's not technically Nintendo, but it's, a, it's definitely a Nintendo-affiliated brand, so nope. Um, no, it's not Princess Connect Redive. I've never, never heard of that. Um, nope. Yep. Nobody's guessed it yet. DDR Mobile. Nope. No, it's not DDR Mobile. Dark Souls isn't a phone game. <laughs> I hope it isn't. Well, actually, they did. No, they did make that like mobile running, like like runny Dark Souls game that apparently wasn't very good, or something like that. Um. <clears throat> so, when you're writing a class, say my class, sure, and you're defining your init. You need self, x, y, whatever. Self dot x is equal to x. Self dot y is equal to y. I'm just going to do like a quick, um, maybe Pythagorean theorem thing here. Um, distance between self and other. Um, def. How about um, <laughs> yeah? It'll just keep it simple. Return x squared plus y squared to the point five. Oh yeah, self dot x. Other dot x minus self dot x. I find that the uh, the what self means is always a little more clear when you're considering um, functions that use self and other. Makes it a little more makes a little more sense. Um, it's not Dragon Quest. It's not Final Fantasy. Um, and it's <laughs> nice weather in it. Uh, and it's not Castlevania. Can I say if it's a gotcha game or not? Um, yeah, I guess you could consider it a gotcha game. Uh, <laughs> you do collect characters that are um, that you that you get through like random draws. So yeah, it's a gotcha game. This is fun. So. Self is only called self um, by convention. It doesn't necessarily have to be called self. But the first argument to any method that exists inside of a class 
is always, 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 always referring to the object that the method is being called on, right? So remember, classes are like templates, and objects are um, the um, physical forms of these templates. Um, let me see here. It's not pocket mortys. Ooh, okay. Can we go over function overloading? Uh, yes. Function overloading. I'm assuming you mean as it applies to classes. Yep, that's totally a thing we can do. It's not Space Invaders Mobile. It's not Grand Blue Fantasy. Um, it's not Pocket Mortys or Azure Lane or Girls Frontline. It's not Dragon Ball Legends. Um, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's also not the OG uh, 1MD3 game. Only Chads need apply. Nope. Um, can I explain multiple inheritance? Multiple inheritance. Yes, we can do that as well. I can go over inheritance and multiple inheritance. It's not the Alchemist Code, it's not Epic 7, it's not Brawl Stars. It's not Pokemon Go. I mean, I have played Pokemon Go quite a bit, but that's not, that's not the game. <clears throat> so, um, let me just finish my description of self here. So, when we create an object, my object is equal to my class providing whatever parameters are being offered. So, oh, my class. So, you'll notice that self is not actually an argument that's included here. So when you use a method, you don't actually, you're not actually required to call this argument, or sorry, or provide a uh, provide an argument for it. It's also not Landgrisser. Um, although the Laughing Man knows his video games very well. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I'll say it again. You guys are going to be so disappointed in me when I say what it is. Uh, <laughs> I found out how to run Doom on my phone. No, no, it's I. No, it's not Doom either. So the object. Uh, let's make two of them, right? My object. One. One. Not exclamation point and my object two. So if we want my object one dot distance my object two yep. oh yeah I need to make that at least a little bit different don't I? There we go. <laughs> um it's not Marvel Strike Force. Um, to the Laughing Man's question, uh, no, no, those are not things that you collect. Uh, you collect other things. Um, can we do an example of classes using an example like a car class or something? Maybe it'll help understand it. Uh, yeah, it's not a Sonic game. Um, would there be a combination of classes and recursion? Uh, no, I'll just say no to that one. That's um, not, no, no. Uh, so anyway, so self, when you are invoking a method other than init, what happens is whatever is here, whatever uh, the method is being called on uh, or from, that becomes the first argument. That becomes self. So Anything that refers to the fields of self inside of this statement here, that refers to object one in this particular case.
The uh, parameter which is provided inside of the uh, braces here, that gets applied to other. So other.x is um, my object too. Now this is not the only way for this to occur. You can also refer to methods directly uh, from the from the class uh, declared class template. So if I go my class dot distance, notice I'm using the name of the class here. You can do my if you try to just do my object two, it'll complain at you that you don't have enough positional arguments. So you have to go my object one and my object two. And you can see that gives you the exact same result. These two different declarations are isometric, i.e. they are the same way of doing the same thing. So self needs to be included uh, in, in summary. Self needs to be included as a parameter for every single method that you write inside of a class. And it always it's always the object on which that method is operating. Cool. Hopefully that's some sort of an explanation. Um, it is not Honka, Honkai Impact Third. Nope. Um, so you can use a word other than self. Yes. So it's only called self out of convention, right? So if I call it, um, uh, uh, power star. I don't know, maybe this has changed since. Yep, oh, it still works. Right? It's just a name, right? If you want, you can call it S, make everything quite short, but also a little bit un illegible. So there you go. Yeah, it's only called self by convention, but it makes sense because it is. Uh, it is this. It is yourself that you're referring to. So self dot x means this instantiation's x. So hopefully that's some kind of an answer. Done. So let's talk about function overloading. So we're actually already doing it when we define init like this. Um, however, there are a whole butt ton of these uh, magic methods that you can overload to uh, enable you to perform a large number of um, basically it allows you to provide definitions for many of the uh, functions that are provided in the Python prelude and make them do something for your specific um, class that you're defining. So as an example, if I wished to print out my class, I'm just going to print this guy as well so as not to lose him. Um, if we wanted to print my object one, you can see that we get something that's not especially useful. What we're actually getting is the memory address of the object. And this is kind of cool. Because with objects, because objects are mutable data structures, uh, you can have the same kind of aliasing occurring with objects as you had uh, up here with lists, right? So you might actually be, it might be useful, let's say, to say my object three is equal to my, um, you know what, this is too long but it's too, I'm too heavily invested. <laughs> My object one, let's make these the same just for the sake of argument. So my object one, we're, we'll test to see if that's equal to my object two. False. How about my object three? True. So equality comparison over objects by default means a test for aliasing, because they're testing to see if the memory addresses of the objects are the same memory address. 
And if they are, then they're both re referring to the same um, concrete object. Loki, he put his pinball game in the App Store, and he's been playing that. No! No, I have not. Um, no, I, I... Trust me, I have had... Oh my god, I think I've got, like, something like 80 hours in it on Steam. Because, like, a lot of the debugging time and development time while the Steam like e while the steam overlay was activated which was like the later parts of development that like counted as playtime hours on steam uh, and believe it or not some people have actually played it longer than i have holy goes um <laughs> it's not power star golf it's not the alchemist code um yeah <laughs> so um so we can redefine what equality means. If you use underscore, underscore, EQ, underscore, underscore, uh, using self and other, you can actually define what equality means for this particular object. So we could say self.x is equal to other.x and self.y is equal to other.y. Um, you don't have to do that. If you wanted to, you could have it have them be equal only if the x components are equal. It's completely up to you to do whatever you want. Uh, define equality however you wish. However, um, notice that in this case, uh, if we change it, that object one and object two are now equivalent because they have the same values, and now they're not. So there are a large number of these magic methods. Python class magic methods. <laughs> it's not seven deadly sins. I feel like most developers don't play the game as much as the, con as the consumer. Um, yeah, that's generally pretty true, um, I, I think. But then again, I don't know. <laughs> when you've made the game, you'll have played it enough, like, you'll have played it enough during the testing phases of the game's development to have sated any desire you may have to play the game after release, generally speaking. At least that's my feeling. So the types of magic methods that you have available to you are here. So you can see you have lots of things like equality, what it means to convert it to a float, what ceiling means for it, um, what greater than or equals or the greater than is um, just so much. I think there's probably, um, yeah, mod, multiplication, add, all of these things, right? So the th problem with a customized class is that a lot of the time, the computer is not intelligent enough to be able to know what you mean when you um, when you say you, like the computer is not intelligent enough to know what add should mean in this context, right? So you have to define it. It's just something you have to do. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, nope, it's not Love Live School Idol Festival. It's not Bang Dream. Um, yeah, uh, developers, like, I don't know, like, I was, for my pinball game, there was, like, this one guy who posted a video of him, like, just completely demolishing the bonus round. And, like, I... I made a couple of 
interesting little design decisions with the bonus round in the game, because um, basically the way that it works is you have a vertical infinite scrolling tin bo- uh, tower of pinball, and the higher you get up this tower of pinball, the um, the more a bonus more of a bonus you get at the end of the uh, at the end of the bonus round, and the amount of, the number of points that you get for doing that are actually uh, exponential on the amount uh, that you've um, that you've climbed the bonus round. And like, I kind of thought that it was reasonable that a person might do like 50% better than I did uh, with like my best ever uh, bonus round height, uh, you know, as the developer of the game. And like, this guy posted a video of him like just completely obliterating my, um, my, my, my record. And then... I'm like, wow, I, I, I messaged him on Steam. I said, wow, that's that's super, super impressive. And he's like, okay, then hold my beer. And then he, like, obliterated that record. He got, like, over, like, like close to three times my maximum score ever on the bonus round that I made. And it's like, good God. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, Shovel Knight, they they were, um, like, the speedrunning community is a community, and you can cater to them as a, as a developer, but, um, uh, but yeah, it's, I think this video is still up on Steam, if you, if you, uh, check the community, uh, the Steam community page for, um, was it over 9,000? No, it wasn't over 9,000, fortunately. Because, like, my best score was, like, 220 or something. It's not Crossy Road. But anyway. um, So. Yeah, so that's, that's how you overload uh, magic methods in order to provide that type of functionality. I hope that some degree of... Uh, solving of that problem. And there you go. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, generally speaking, uh, if I may offer some, uh, if I may offer Mr. Matthew a little bit of game dev advice, that he that's completely unsolicited. Um, while it's good to have a visual theme or some sort of like humor theme in mind when you're developing the game, um, you it doesn't matter how funny your game is if it's not a good game to play. So you should always, when you're developing a game, strip it down to the very very um, the most bare essential components of the gameplay, tweak that until it's fun, and then build off of it. Um, and you may find out when you do that that your core concept for the game isn't actually fun, which means that you probably shouldn't pursue the game as a uh, as a project. And it might you might be able to say, well, you know, I made this thing; it was a project. I can I can let it rest now because it's not really worth the time and energy to do a commercial release. Uh, this is what's known as the minimum viable product, uh, and I know it's like it feels like a constraint on um, creativity, but uh, generally speaking, constraints on your creativity make you more creative, not less. But yeah. Um, anyway, I had. <laughs> Binding of Isaac. Yeah, um yeah. Well, the the uh the nice thing about the Zelda format, there are a couple of nice things about the uh the Zelda format. It's reasonably amenable to procedural generation, although uh, procedural generation as a um, uh, a game mechanic is kind of falling out of favor. Uh, people are 
realizing that in terms of like depth you're not going to be able to like no computer is able to outcompete human beings in terms of creating a good level um it turns out that it takes a little bit more than just having a bunch of good elements and gluing them together uh, semi-randomly. Um, however, the one thing that's nice about the Zelda sort of formula is that, um, to some degree, for whatever reason, it seems like um, it's not stale. <laughs> like the 2D platformer, like a Mario-style game, that is so frigging stale that, like, as an indie developer, if you want to make a game like that, good frigging luck getting any attention whatsoever. But it seems like uh, Zelda clones aren't quite there yet. Um, like, they're not as saturated, so you might have some good uh, you might have some good luck there. But um, with respect to a Zelda game, though, if you're gonna if you want to make something like that, get to it. And make sure that you beat Nintendo to uh, the uh, release of their Zelda Maker game that they're um, that they're uh, I know they're working on, and I just I don't know why they haven't released it yet, but it seems um, like they released Super Mario Maker 2, and like there are some definite hints that uh, Zelda Maker is coming down the pipe at some point. I think that the um, the sort of quasi dungeon builder sub mini game within the recent re-release of Link to uh, Link Link's Awakening is um, that that's probably like a practice run. I expect probably at some point within the next two years there'll be either the release or the announcement of a Zelda Maker. But uh, so if you want to capitalize on it, hurry up, man, hurry up. Um, anyway. Pretty sure that. Mm. Yes. Um, yeah. That, that's the other thing is like sometimes you can get a long way just by modding. Um, you don't necessarily need to build something from scratch. Yep. Yeah. But again, if you're gonna do something like that. Start with the most stripped down basic um, elements that you can think of uh, for this, like, like one type of enemy. Your character's main action. Like, if there are multiple weapons, do one weapon. If you have planned uh, multiple stages, do one stage. Um, don't even do a full stage. Keep it as small as possible and make a little little tiny demo. Tweak that until it's fun. Um, I think the D idea with all the clips. Yeah. Um, so um, the idea with Zelda clones is that Zelda has a lot you can do, as opposed to a 2D platformer where you can uh, uh, basically have just have to go right to win. Um, well, I would I would quibble with you a little bit there, Constantinos, uh, because um, Metroid games and like the Metroidvania subgenre is essentially based on like it's a it's also a 2D platformer, right? However, very very different uh, game style. <laughs> Mr. Moore, hurry up and make a Zelda maker before Nintendo does. <laughs> Me, how do I print hello and hello world in Python? Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, serious, serious um, suggestion though. Um, if you're if you're looking to make a game of that type, I can suggest making uh, using Game Maker Studio as opposed to using something like Unity, which is I, what I've been using. Um, it is um, you'd be, you you basically the speed with which you can develop something uh, has a lot to do with the amount of stuff that the, the, the platform you're using does for you. And Game Maker is made specifically for the type of game that uh, it sounds like you want to make. So I would recommend taking a look at it, even if it costs a little bit of money. Um, mm -hmm. 
yeah, Ori and the Blind Forest, I believe that's classified as a uh, uh, Metroidvania. Um, the other thing, if you look at a game like um, whatever that thing that was with the kid in the dark woods, what's it called again? Not Amnesia. They made, I think Inside was the second one they did. Um, Anyway, uh, like there's a lot that you can do with a platformer, but the the problem is that uh, pixel platformers. Like if you look, if you search, like it's kind of fun. If you if you take a look at like the new releases on Steam, um, I'm I absolutely think that like you could probably like of the like 50 to 100 games that were released today probably a considerable number of them are specifically limbo yes thank you limbo um probably a considerable number of them are um 2d platformers godo engine looks kind of cool too yeah i've never used it but i uh, i've heard that i should so there you go um <laughs> that will be the bonus question on the exam <laughs> make mario no um no make katamari um, yeah, it's kind of funny. Katamari, actually, Katamari Reroll, I picked up on sale on my Switch, and, uh, I never actually played the original, and it's a lot of fun, but that's not the game either. And Limbo is also not the game. Now, it's a little more simple mathematically. Doesn't really have to do with characters being in positions. Well, I mean, it does, but you don't get direct control over any of the characters in the game I'm talking about. That's your third hint! Well, they actually did a Katamari mobile game. Uh, the only problem was that it was basically Temple Run. <laughs> Except with a Katamari ball. Um, okay, so nobody, nobody look at my password. Anyway, um, so I should also talk about the multiple inheritance. So in order to talk about multiple inheritance, it would be good to talk about regular inheritance first. Um, so inheritance is the purpose of this set of braces that you have during the class declaration. If you remember the uh, classical example of inheritance, is um, inheriting from exception to create a new exception type, right? So when you inherit from exception, all of the things that an exception has in it, um, these are all things that you can now use. Uh, they're now available to this new class. So the idea is, get out of here. I do not want to. I do not want to be social. Good lord, get out of here. Um, so if you take a look at, um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna make my point here about the games that have come out, um, and then we'll then we'll continue. Choop choop choop. Popular, upcoming, new and trending. See more new releases. Generally speaking, it's actually kind of difficult to get to. Yeah, wow, they've put it behind it even even further. They've put it behind click walls. So if you if you actually want to see the actual new releases on stream, like the like the raw who's released what, um, you actually have to click over to new releases from popular um, new releases. So, Namco, Namco, this is like, yeah, like, look at, look at this game, right? This is, it's amazing that they want $8 for this, just saying. 
but that looks more like an Arkanoid thing. But yeah, there's a there's a there's a platform for you, platformer for you. Um. That looks like some sort of puzzle platformer. That could be roughly constru construed as a platformer. That's 3D, but eh. <laughs> okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh wow! Yeah, oops. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I would like to formally challenge me to a uh, Super Smash Brothers uh, match in order for me to not have to do the exam. Nope, nope, I can't do that. Sorry, um, I can't excuse people from academic requirements on the basis of video games. Uh, <laughs> um, not trying to start a fight, but Super Smash Brothers Melee is better than Super Smash Brothers. Uh, ultimate. Um, I... <laughs> I I actually really like like I I really understand why um, melee is considered the best one because it is um, just so much faster. Oh, there's another pixel platformer. Maybe if, but yep, that's a pixel platformer. That, oop, that's, um, actually, that's a, uh, that's a game that I played on a browser once. That's funny. Game called Maze. Eh. Anyway, you can see how lots of stuff gets lost in the, uh, in the, um, huge, ever-burgeoning deluge. Like, what's today? Today is the 17th. Take a look at this. See how many games? These are all just games that were released today. Look at this. There. Like, that's just a stupid number of games. Um... Oh, come on. Jigglypuff was always a bit of a... Uh, what am I going to say? What am I going to say that's going to offend all of the Jigglypuff mains? Like, I'm sorry, just my philosophy of playing characters. If you're playing a, if you're playing a character that, like, really kind of sucks just for one move, then... Yeah, have fun with all of the, the friends that you're making with that type of demonstration. Anyway. <laughs> Actually, in uh, in Ultimate, I main Bowser. He's awesome. Wait, so can we expect to see any SQL or database questions on the exam? Uh, uh, shaking the Magic 8-Ball... It says, try asking again. No, it's shake it again, shake it again, shake it again. It says, signs point to probably. <laughs> but an idea. Mm. <laughs> Anywho. Um... Oh my goodness, that means that would mean I'd have to renew my uh, Nintendo subscription. Good lord. Anywho, um, so, Inheritance. This is regular Inheritance. Multiple Inheritance would be when you have something that inherits from 
more than one class. So if we have, you know, the example from the slides is we have a class called color and def in it self uh, self and color self dot color is equal to the argument provided and define a method called um, uh, we did darken in the slide so why don't we do lighten in this example self dot color is equal to light plus self dot color and it has to protect it has to have self of course so if we wanted class compound sure why not it it would inherit from both my class and color uh, incidentally the convention is to capitalize classes but again too much investment so what this means is that compound has definitions uh, it it includes everything that these guys have in them so uh, but we might have to redefine some stuff uh, for example the init we're going to have to have it take an additional parameter. And uh, I find the best way to do this is to um, use, the, uh, use the init functions from the other classes using access through the class template itself. So color.init and provide self and color. And my class dot init using self x and y, and you can see that using that, first of all, it actually works. Next, if we have um, x one is equal to compound, um, you know, four eight and X or not X blue sure and Z X2 is equal to compound seven nine green then if we take a look at X1 dot lighten and then we print x1 dot color you can see we get light blue there you go so the lighten method although it's not defined inside of the compound class is available because compound inherits from color there you go um, and here's a, another little experiment for you let's see what happens if we try to equate x1 and x2. The eq method is defined inside of my class. So let's see if it works. False. However, if we make these the same, it becomes true. So you can see that it's using this definition of eq. If we wanted, we could redefine eq in the compound class in order to take into account the color. We could also do matching by color, but that's, you know, kind of entirely up to the developer. So there we go. Um, I'm just going to scroll through all of these um, uh, messages. Yes, I, I play Bowser because he can also gimp people at 0%. Mm -hmm. When are the marks coming out for A6? Probably sometime tomorrow. Um, someone approaches Mr. Moore's shield. Mr. Oh, it's, oh you're, so you're approaching me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, 
the Koopa Claw is like my favorite move if you can get it to land. <laughs> yes. Will the exam start at 9 like the tests? Yes, the exam will start at 9 o'clock, just like the tests. So, um, yes. I think that I have addressed that question as well. There we go. Are there any other uh, questions that are non-video game related? If you had the same method, oh, there's one. <laughs> if you had the same magic method in multiple classes, which method, which magic method takes priority? That's a good question. We can find out by experimentation. Okay, so this test, x1 is equal to x2, that is succeeding. But this test, x1 is equal to x3, is failing. So it's not, it's not just oring the two uh, equal, uh, these two methods together. Might have something to do with the order in which they're declared. Let's take a look at this. Well, that's interesting. Did I do this right? Turn self dot other self dot color equals other dot color. Hmm. Um. Yeah. So. If there is, if you are in a situation where there will be a conflict, that is a, a that's a situation in which you definitely want to throw a um, you want to throw one of these in. Oh. Ah, that would okay, that was messing us up. Okay, wait. Hold on. Cause that was messing us up. So Yeah, okay, so it okay. It does. My initial instinct was correct. So which um which definition gets the first gets priority on redefining all of the uh, all of the magic methods depends on the order in which you declare them there we go we figured it out folks we figured it out okay can we double check all the remote file uh, can we ch uh, can we double check all the remote file oh actually exist um, can we double check if the remote file IO actually exists? Oh, um, uh, there's 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 no remote file IO. There's no remote file IO. There's no remote file IO. Just so you know. Are there other major classes besides object and exception? Um, yeah, like list is a class. Dictionary is a class. Range is a class. Uh, like it creates a range object, which is a element of the range class pretty much everything is a is a 
is an object of one class or another. That's why they call it object-oriented programming. I forgot to email about you get, getting the practice test. So do it, please. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I realized that. Thank you, Albert. Um, yeah, so anyway. There we go. The few, the proud, the 37. Did we have our break at 6.30, or am I tripping? Nope, you are not tripping. We have not had our break yet. Um, but, uh, I don't know, like, I, I, I honestly, like, if, if people have more questions, then, uh, we can continue, and if people do not have any more questions, then, uh, you know, maybe we could just, you know, end the stream, because, you know, I'm sure we all have things we could be doing this evening. You know, if we have nothing more to discuss, then we should uh, stop discussing it. Do we need the three hours? Yes, that's the that's the question. I don't think so. I mean, this is this is really, um, you know, student directed. Uh, you guys, as long as you guys keep asking me questions, I will keep providing you answers. But. Uh, <laughs> what games have I been playing on my phone? See, if I just told you, then there's no fun left in the game. Um... <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Maybe you guys have some more uh, guesses. It's kind of unfair. It's like, guess a game out of, like, the millions that are on the store. <laughs> Oof. It's not until this moment that I realized taking three summer school courses was a bad idea. You can do it! I believe in you! Just keep going! You can do it, man! Just do it. Yeah. That's true. If I end the stream, then uh, you guys will have failed to guess. It's not, it's not, oh, come on, dating simulator. That's such, that's a, that's a genre, man, but it's not a dating simulator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> mm. More hints. <laughs> um. Okay, another hint, let me think. Not AFK Arena. I generally try to avoid the games that have been advertised heavily. Um, I'm just trying to think of a hint that won't like give it away completely. Uh, oh, a real question. 
for SQL questions, if we create, if we have create table statement, then insert, then select, you cannot run the code twice without drop. But if you have to drop, you cannot run it the first time. Um, yeah, but you can catch the exception that's uh, produced, um, right? So um, if you write a function that creates these things, right? Um, you can always, you know, if you're trying to like re if you're trying to rebuild the database, you can always drop the drop the table that you want to um, that you want to wipe or clear, and then catch that, like put it in a try and accept pass, and then uh, create table. That way, that will run even if the uh, table doesn't actually exist in in the uh, in the database. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really I can't really speak to organic chemistry. Seeing as I'm a computer scientist. Have I finished updating test two? Uh, yes. So if there are any outstanding problems with people's grades and people not feeling that their grades are representative of their performance on test two, there's actually a uh, there's an announcement on Avenue about that with the emails that you can send those complaints to because it's two of the TAs. Hmm. Well, um, <laughs> I'm. I am honored that you have that you have been with us until the bitter end. Uh, however, if you do have a stats final tomorrow, perhaps the best thing that you could be doing is getting a good night's sleep tonight. But I, you know, I don't think we're going to be precluding that. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm looking up to see if a thing provides enough of a hint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Imagine not having an activation energy. Chemistry gang. Um, mm -hmm. So the extra marks from the tests aren't getting transferred to the exam. That's correct. If you scored more than 100% in the category of the tests, then your, uh, your, your, your tests are capped at 30%. So, yep, although there will be a bonus mark, there will be some bonus marks available on the exam itself. Uh, by the way, will there be S? QL on the final. Um, can neither confirm nor deny, though leaning towards confirm. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, if there are any, if there are any engineers in the audience, uh, if you don't think there are any bird courses in university, then uh, 
try 3IO3, which is like the writing, learn how to write a thing course. If you've taken grade 12 English, then it's really <laughs> Ornithology 101. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, chemists. Uh, chemistry is like one of the difficult sciences. Um, although most sciences are difficult when you get down to it. <laughs> mm. Lots of lots of chemists in the crowd. Um, okay, I'm going to I'm going to enter a hint to the game that I've been playing into the chat. Get ready for it. Well, I mean, pro yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, to a to a point, you know, we kind of have to keep you guessing. If we told you exactly what was on the exam, then you'd just study exactly what was on the exam, and then you wouldn't, um, then you wouldn't. Uh, have to study any of the rest of the course. So the idea is, if there's at least some probability that anything in the course is going to be on the exam, then you have to have you can't you can't neglect any area of the course. But um, uh, <laughs> uh, Albert, I, I I think yeah yeah it was kind of a giveaway. But um, yep, that's the one. Albert got it. So, but again, that doesn't, that doesn't tell you how to code it, right? So it doesn't, uh, but yeah, I've, I've been playing the Battle Cats. It's a fun game. It's, it's like, like there are few enough ads that I can stand to play it, you know, and it's, I don't know, the incentive reward system is set up really well. It's kind of terrible how, like, all of these mobile games are, uh, um, like, basically just psychological manipulation. But anyway, sometimes it's fun, the psychological manipulation. And besides, what else are you going to do when you're on the toilet? <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, it, like if you, I'm sure all of you are now uh, going to take a look at that game. And if you take a look at that game, you'll notice that in terms of like the underlying mathematics, it's it's really rather simple. Hmm. Anyway, um, are there any more questions of a technical nature? And if I've missed any of your questions, I'm sorry. There's been a lot of chat activity this, uh, you know, because we've been we've been chatting about video ga video games quite a lot. Like, look at this chat, right? This is all you. Look at that. 18 messages. Good lord. <laughs> um. No. <laughs> like I said, generally speaking, um. It's my it's my humble opinion that the more a game has to advertise, um, probably the more it ha money it has to extract back out of you, the player. So if you have never heard of a of a mobile game before, it's probably a, a decent one. I don't know. Is Dwarf Fortress on mi on mobile yet? That would be fun.
Anyway. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a moment to uh, see if you can guys can come up with any more questions for me to answer related to the course material. I'll be right back. You correctly guessed. It's now kitty time. Hello. Hello. Oh, he's kissing kisses. Of course, it is, uh, you know, sort of a natural thing to be feeling a little bit um, melancholic when something that you've been maybe even enjoying over the course of, you know, the last seven weeks. We've had, we've spent the better part of the last two months together with this, um, this wonderful little course of ours. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that through, through my instruction and the, uh, TA's instruction and all of the exercises, the gauntlet of exercises that you were uh, forced to run against your will, that perhaps, you know, you've come to develop an appreciation for um, computer science as a discipline, uh, what it is that, uh, um, full screen tip, <laughs> um, what it is that uh, you can do with programs, um, you know, maybe find out that, you uh, uh, Python can be a reasonable and good alternative to your uh, everybody's favorite statistical programming package, R. <laughs> that might be a useful thing. Um, you, you know, programming is really important. And the way, the way that university research, well, research in general is going is that, like, more and more, you just need more data analyzed, you know, and you need you need the type of algorithmic techniques available to you that you can only get if you actually know a real programming language. And, you know, as much as over the course of the semester, I have made various, you know, um, you know, various derogatory remarks about Python as a language and, you know, how it's a little bit clumsy and, you know, not all of the design decisions make sense, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and, you know, how for many people Python is an introduction language to some other better language. Python itself is actually a fully formed, fully capable programming language, and um, hopefully through your knowledge of Python, you will be able to achieve greater things. Go on to greater heights! in your lives. Um, and I'm going to go get the other cat.
someone has an actual question. What about the security? I don't know. What? Okay. I have brought the other kitten. Like, if you guys go back into the archives, you will see how big this kitten was um, compared to how she is now. Like, this cat has doubled in size and weight since her first appearance on this live stream. So that would be a cool thing. But anyway, uh, can we possibly do question three from assignment five, part one? Um, yeah, we can We can take a look at that. Spoof. There. Hello. Are you a sweetie? Yeah, she's a sweetie. Okay, I just have to log into Avenue. <laughs> Nobody look at my password. Um, can I tell you a secret? I don't actually have a solution to that one. Um, the, the psychotic level difficulty uh, question on A6. I don't actually have a solution. That's why it's worth so many points. Because I couldn't even be bothered solving it. Assignments, assignments, do, 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 assignment six, five, I meant five, do, 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 do. Oh my goodness. Um, question three. Oh, for God's sake. Do I already have this thing in here? I do already have this thing in here. Did I already do a solution to this question? I may have already done a solution to this question. Yeah, I, um, okay, let me just chat with, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could brute force it, but, you know, I was so invested in the little, um, you know, infrastructure I had built for slotting strategies in. Anyway, um, do question three from part from A five part one. So just reacquainting myself with this thing. Um, we have. Basically, it's just printing the response at this point. Yep. Okay. So, res.text. Let's do stuff with it. So, retrieve, uh, we'll get in, input, no, that's uh, probably a keyword. Um, gotten equals rest.text 
maybe decouple it, print gotten. Doop a doop doop, ba doop a doop boop boop. Be little 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 in my, I believe that this, um, this whole thing hinges on the underlying assumption that the schedule is the same from week to week, right? So, for example, I think one approach to this question would be to, um, One approach to this question would be to split the thing up according to a, um, like put things uh, based on their days of the week. So let me, let's, let's see here. Um, okay. This is going to be some data structures stuff. Okay. Okay, folks, here we go. So, um gotten that, split that on new line, similar to how we were doing it before. Um, so for, uh, let's, let's make a dictionary of um, appointments or thing, whatever. <clears throat> yep. Yep, 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 yep. So we can even get rid of the first element of this, right? So for row in gotten from one to the end of the list, my phone keeps turning off and cutting me off from the chat. Chat, chat, chat. So. This is all code that we'd done in a pre the last time somebody asked me about this question. So here we go. Um, so for each row in gotten, if row uh, well actually let's, 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 row uh, um, let's say. Vals is equal to row dot split, and we're splitting on comma. That seems like that would work pretty well. I'm not sure with what slash r is supposed to mean, but it probably doesn't matter. So that's 0, 1, 2, and 3. If vals 3 is in the appointments, then vowels dot um, vowels uh, appointment at vowels three. How do we want to do this? We want to make a tuple. Let's make a list of tuples. Is equal to this boyo plus a tuple that is consists of vowels zero, vowels one, and vowels two. There we go. Else that, but basically without this bit. Okay, so that will, in essence, Create a dictionary where each appointment has a bunch of um, 
basically all of the appointments have been grouped. Uh, all of the all of the appointments which are the same have the same label like English class or um, dinner with friend, etc. Those are all now they all point to lists of tuples where each tuple is a date, right? Uh, so, we can now use this to determine what we consider to be inconsistencies. And in order to do this, you kind of have to just look at the at the uh, data, right? So might actually be good to see that in a better light for thing in cotton print thing always recommend looking at the data so So if we run this again, taking a look at what the uh, oops, list index out of range. Really? Why did that happen now and not before? It was happening before, okay. Ah, okay, we've got an empty one at the end. That'll do her. Okay. No big deal. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you can see that when we um, when we group together the dates, you can notice that there's a pretty distinct pattern going on. 
one eight two eight eight three eight five eight five eight six eight seven eight one two three four five six oh we have a we have a missing entry one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight etc cetera, etc cetera. so So basically, you want to be checking um, if all of the um, dates are consistent, right? So for i in range, um, I think it goes up to what? 7? So range 8. If i is equal to um, um, apt thing at i one uh, zero, then and Pass if I equals false errors equals empty else errors plus equals thing <coughs> pardon me so that's check one Check two for each um, for date in apt thing if Well, there are a number of ways you could do this. And I think the last one is just consistent. Yep, 
the last one is also just consistent. So we can apply the same check, but to another parameter. Ah, plus equal isn't going to work, is it? Dot append. Did I even use the flag? I don't think I even used the flag. Oh, but I do need to unindent these bits. Well, how about you do the non-stupid thing, Nick? So I think I can stop the thing where I print everything out. That would probably be good. Oh, this is the list of errors. Hmm.
Oh, and also... You know, I think the stream is not really a stream. So check one is failing. Oh yeah, it's off by one. Guess what, folks? It's an off by one error. You remember those from the slides? So we are... What if the... I'm, so the thing that I'm doing here is I'm basically taking the first element, assuming that one is consistent with all the rest of them. But in this particular case, the first element is the one that's wrong. So, um, This is a real clutch here, folks. Ah, and um, we need to subtract a couple of characters. Oh, it's a negative one, not a negative two.
Oh yeah, Python doesn't have plus plus. So there you go. I think we'll call that a day with that solution. <laughs> yeah, too much torrenting. That's that's definitely the problem. I don't know. Anyway, um I don't think it's an SQL injection attack, no. Uh anyway, if there are no more questions, then I think that we'll finish the lecture component of the course here. Um, I'll just give you guys a moment to maybe come up with another question or two. How's the audio coming through, I wonder? Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. Testing. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. Testing. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, anyway. Um, I'm not sure I have anything left to say, which is probably a good thing to be, that's a good position to be at, in at, as a professor at the end of a course. So, um, yeah. Good luck on the exam. To all of the people who have managed to stick it through to the end. Um, may you have the best of luck and the best of, may, may, may the fruits of your hard work be delivered to you um, in due course of time. Um, yeah, you guys are great. I've I've really enjoyed um, all of the uh, like the the activity that that the chat has had this year. It's been really. It's I I felt there's been good rapport. Um, yeah. So thank you, confused.
Perhaps you weren't so confused after all. Thank you, fat fish. I hope that you'll find a weight loss plan designed for fish, if that is your goal. Um, but yeah, hopefully the exam doesn't go too bad. Um, but yeah, this will this will be. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Taymor, you're also. Um, your your contribution to the course has not been unnoticed either. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, one final plug. If you liked this course, please give us a good review. Uh, and I'm not talking on iTunes because this isn't a podcast. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, anyway, take her easy. Have a good rest of your life. Your life is like it's the only one you got, so make it count. Eh? Unlike in video games. All right, folks. Ta-ta. I will see you later. Perhaps. Maybe even in person someday. <laughs>